Today, we delve into the intriguing world of confirmation bias and its profound impact on scientific research and perception. In our journey to understand how beliefs shape our view of reality, we explore the concept of confirmation bias, a phenomenon where individuals favor information that confirms their pre-existing beliefs or hypotheses, ignoring contradictory evidence. This bias influences not just the general public, but also the scientific community, affecting data collection, experimentation, and interpretation. The term confirmation bias was coined by English psychologist Peter Wason. In a 1960 experiment, Wason demonstrated how people tend to see what they want or expect to see, disregarding information that contradicts their expectations. He showed that participants failed to solve a simple problem because they interpreted feedback as confirming an incorrect hypothesis. From bus drivers starting buses with a sleight of hand to scientific experiments, confirmation bias skews our perception and understanding. Ludwig Fleck, in his book on the development of scientific facts, discusses how initial observations are often imprecise, leading to a gradual adjustment of data to fit facts a process influenced by tradition, education, and familiarity. David Goodstein's On Fact and Fraud, Cautionary Tales from the Front Lines of Science, highlights instances of deliberate fraud where researchers believe their fabrications to be true. This underscores the complex interplay between career pressures, preconceived notions, and the unique challenges of experimental repeatability in fostering an environment ripe for confirmation bias. Our episode also revisits historical examples where confirmation bias misled entire scientific communities. The story of N-rays, a supposed new form of radiation discovered by René Blondlot in 1903, serves as a cautionary tale. Despite widespread acceptance and hundreds of supportive publications, it took the skepticism of physicist Robert Wood to reveal that N-rays never existed. Similarly, we explore the reversal of medical opinions on certain types of cholesterol, once deemed harmful for over two decades, and the ineffectiveness of stents in treating chest pain, challenging long-held medical practices, and highlighting the role of confirmation bias in medical research. The episode touches on instances where determined individuals challenged and changed entrenched beliefs, such as Ezra Zahar's fight against the Israeli military's water discipline, and Oliver Sacks bringing attention back to Tourette syndrome after it had been forgotten by the medical community. We conclude with a modern example of confirmation bias affecting both research outcomes and public perception, the phenomenon of gluten sensitivity. Initial studies suggested that gluten could cause digestive issues for non-celiac individuals, sparking a massive industry around gluten-free products. However, further research by the same scientists, including a meticulous double-blind study, found no specific reaction to gluten pointing towards a nocebo effect where the mere focus on gastrointestinal discomfort led to its perception regardless of gluten content. Confirmation bias, a universal challenge. Faith in the age of knowledge reveals how confirmation bias is a pervasive force shaping not only personal beliefs but also scientific research and societal norms. From the misinterpretation of scientific data to the revival of forgotten diseases, this bias illustrates the intricate dance between perception and reality, reminding us of the importance of skepticism and open-mindedness in the pursuit of knowledge. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Faith in the Age of Knowledge. Stay curious and keep questioning.